You're listening to Sarah Hagen backstage with interviews and insights from years inside the music industry. Join Sarah as she talks with masters of their crafts, finding out what makes them tick both inside and outside of the music business. Welcome to Sarah Hagen backstage. My guest today, Thomas Lang, is considered to be an ultimate drummer's drummer, known worldwide for his incredible clinics and masterclasses, his DVDs, his teaching methods, and his work with Drum Channel. Thomas is full of really great advice about challenging yourself and growth at all stages of drumming, and he shares some of that insight with us here today, as well as gives us the inside scoop on Westlake Drum Center. So come along with me as I catch up with Thomas Lang. Thomas, welcome to the podcast. Hey, Sarah. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. It's really great to see you and to see this new space of yours. Tell me about this. Well, it's not quite new, really. I've had it for, you know, several years, uh, but I'm in my studio in Oak Park, California. And uh, this is one of the recording rooms where I do all my session work. You know, I teach here also. I uh, record uh, live streams from here and broadcast from here. And I film and record a lot of uh, content for Drum Channel here. And uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is, I guess, the main recording room. And I'm all set up with cameras and audio. And it's big enough to set up four or five drum sets. At the moment, I have three set up here. And uh, yeah, it's a very comfortable space. It's got very high ceilings. And yeah. uh, I can play day and night and won't annoy anybody. So that is good. important. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess when I when I meant new, I meant like the treatment um, because we were just oh. talking. We were talking about the the treatment exactly. that you have done to that space. So tell us about that. Look at that beautiful strata here on the wall. This <laughs> is all stuff that Mitch from Audimute installed here. He did my whole studio, not just this room, all the other rooms too. And uh, this is acoustic treatment. Um, and he uses uh, recycled materials. It's I think you know what it's called exactly. What is it? Yeah. So I, if it's like the wood paneling, it's um it's acoustic wood. Yes. Right? Okay. Yeah. This and is then not because the, the finish right behind you is that acoustic wood wood paneling. That's acoustic wood exactly. This is more like a brick look almost. Oh. I call it you know, on the wall here. I call it monochrome Tetris design. I like it. And, uh, <laughs> it's great. It looks great when you light it, you know, you, it absorbs all kind of color like here the red for example, that strata, it looks like a slate brick almost. But it is uh basically made from recycled paper. And um and it's a very dense absorbent material. It looks great and uh the room sounds fantastic. So big shout out to Mitch and Audimute. Thank you for that, Mitch. Absolutely. Thank you, Mitch. Yeah. Um, and so tell me too, um, you know, due to the pandemic and all of that, I know that you, you've been teaching for a long time and we'll, we'll go into that as well, but the changes that you had to make due to the pandemic, have you kept some of those changes with your, um, with your setup, like with remote learning, remote recording, all of that? How did that, how did the pandemic really affect how you are doing things moving forward? Um, well, I already had a online school set up long before the pandemic. So mm -hmm. I was very lucky in that sense. I already had all my camera equipment and uh, streaming equipment, uh, recording equipment, everything in my studio. So um, of course I focused more on that during the pandemic. And I did a lot of you know, live streams, um, online lessons, online masterclasses, online clinics. But luckily, I was already set up for that. And of course, I kept my online school going and focused on that when there wasn't any touring or gigging. And I was very, very lucky because, again, I had everything I needed to just continue working. And I was able to continue doing all my session work here from my own studio and invite people into my studio to work with me here. So I was uh, lucky in that sense. But I definitely tweaked and improved my setup here specifically for remote sessions for online clinics master classes teaching etc um and i kept that going and i still am streaming uh, several times a week from here i still do my remote lessons from here 
as well as physical lessons, of course. And I continue to do all my session work from here. Not all of it. Of course, I also do sessions in LA in other studios, but I do a vast amount of uh, remote sessions for clients all over the world from here. That's, a, so that's I was, amazing. I was lucky yeah. to have everything set up. Yeah. Yes, you absolutely. You were lucky. I mean, I know that you were into that like long before it was a necessity for a lot of people. Um, I recently, uh, men, sorry, I, re <laughs> I recently um, hosted a panel discussion. That's the word, Sarah. Yeah. And we spoke about um, just the, how far technology came in such a short amount of time out of necessity. And Peter Erskine and Greg Bissonette were on this panel and they were talking about uh, you know, the, the switchers for the cameras and being able to really connect with students better now that the students actually had the technology they needed to show them as, as teachers what they were working with. Absolutely, yeah. I, um, you know, I'm lucky to have several Blackmagic switches, video switches, and uh, Roland uh, video switches, the VR... HD VR 4, I believe uh, they're called a 4 VR. Um, and yes, uh, you know, the challenge often when you're teaching somebody online is not for me so much showing them in detail what I'm doing, breaking down things um, and, and being able to show them, for example, a foot camera, overhead camera for certain moves and whatever. You know, I already have that set up, but the challenge is for the students to do the same to you, you know, to have decent sound yes. and not distorted like laptop uh, sound. And because right. um, it, it gets a little, you know, difficult to teach if you can't really hear what the student is doing uh, with a decent amount of clarity. Uh, but now, like you say, a lot of my students also have pretty professional setups at home, fully mic drum sets, video switchers, multiple cameras. And I can, you know, say to my student, hey, come on, show me what you're doing with the feet now. And they'll switch to the foot camera. Um, right. And that's a really incredible uh, way to teach now. And um, technology has not only improved, of course, uh, but what, there was a lot of things that were specifically designed now uh, to allow for that, you know, for really sort of in detail uh you know detailed teaching and um and it's if if a lot of times when when i teach students who have a, a great setup i find that the impact uh, is is a lot stronger and uh and they they learn faster you can break things down uh in more detail and it's super helpful right that's a really good point too yeah um and yeah you are right now your studio space is inside of Westlake Drum Center. Is that right? Yeah, I've well, never been there, so I just I want to hear all about this you because gotta it's so you gotta come. This I is know, a I know I have to get there. Yes, next time you're in the neighborhood, do swing by a uh, Westlake Drum Center. Yes, this is a well, it's many things. It's an audio video production facility, recording studio. It's also a physical teaching facility. And it is also a, a, a drum school and drum shop. It's a lot of things. So WDC stands for Westlake Drum Center, which is the store, the, the teaching facility. It also stands for Westlake Drum Channel. We are a annex to Drum Channel in Oxnard here. And I do a lot of productions uh, for Drum Channel, instructional uh, video productions, live streams, etc. And I work uh, a lot with uh, Don Lombardi from Drum Channel. Uh, we invite other drummers here to film lessons for Drum Channel. Uh, we have the Drum Channel faculty here all the time, regularly. Chad Wackerman, Terry Bozio, Greg Bizonet, and myself, we all have academies on Drum Channel. I stream Thomas Lang's Drum Universe live here for Drum Channel on a weekly basis or bi-weekly, actually. And um, WDC also stands for Westlake Drum Club. So this is also a bit of a drum hang for all the local drummers. And as you may know, there's tons of incredible drummers in this neighborhood in this part of uh, LA in California. Yeah. So, um, you know, my neighbors come here, we jam, we hang out, uh, we show each other stuff. Um, we have events here and little um, concerts. So. Uh, it's it's a bit of a drum hub and a kind of a meeting point for the local drum community here. And uh, we host camps here. 
um, camps with me, of course, my boot camps. Um, we also host camps for other uh, drummers here. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a busy spot and it's a lot of fun to connect with local drummers from the community here and to produce all this stuff for Drum Channel. And of course, it's also my practice space and my <laughs> recording space. So it's many things. It's everything. It sounds it's everything. like <laughs> it's everything. And I love that it's a drum hang. I love the drum club thing. You know, yeah. I, we talk a lot on this podcast about the drum hang and the community within this, you know, the, the drummer community, which is just, it's so amazing and it makes me so happy. And so I love that it's like a hub there. So it if is. anyone in the area, they should come by and you have, yeah product and you know who knows who they'll run into too so exactly. yeah and there's always it's always busy here there's always lots of uh, friends here and colleagues and uh we really have fun hangs and you know we're very lucky in terms of the location here because there's so many world famous drummers uh, around this neighborhood yes. and uh anybody from like greg or terry you know, or, or Kurt Piscara and John Robinson and Luis Conte and, uh, you know, Don Perry and Myron Grombacher and so many more. So right. it's, it's, it's a really, you know, it's a meeting spot for us all. And it's a great place to just exchange information, ideas and hang or just have a cup of coffee and shoot the breeze. Absolutely. I, and I was just talking with Greg Bissonette at PASIC about that area and how when you were looking to um, buy a home he had said oh here's my real estate agent and then all of a sudden he got a knock on the door and he was like hey i'm your neighbor <laughs> so, yeah exactly yeah it no, is he, was, he drew a map of the neighborhood on a, uh, a map of the neighborhood on a napkin for me and he said check out this neighborhood it's really nice great schools and you know for the kids and uh, just a beautiful part of california and uh, so I did. And yeah, a couple of weeks later, I knocked on his door and said, hey, I took your <laughs> advice. I'm here. <laughs> Hello, neighbor. <laughs> That's incredible. That is incredible. Yeah. Okay. So I have to I have to make it there. But anyone who's looking to come by, it's um, they can find the location www.westlakedrumcenter.com. So anyone who's yeah. listen, listening who wants to stop in. And also your products for sale on the website too, right? Yeah, so exactly. it's a good place to check out. Check and out products. DW, Gretsch, PDP, you know, dealer. And of course we sell everything also electronics and accessories. So yeah, Absolutely. go on the website. It's, um, if you need anything, let us know. For sure. And so speaking of kids, I want to kind of like go back in time to when you were a kid back in Austria. I really want to hear about, uh, I know you started playing drums young. You were like five years old, right? Yeah. Um, Four, yeah. Oh my gosh, this is incredible to me. I mean, I I feel like all drummers wanted to play drums that young, but it was a matter of <laughs> do you have access to them, right? Um, exactly. But so tell us a little bit about about that time period and like your discovery of drums and how you figured out that's what you wanted to do. Well, you know, I I saw a drummer on television and it was intriguing because uh, it, first of all, it looked really fun. And he seemed to be in charge and he was counting off the song. Everybody was watching him and he seemed to be kind of the boss of the band. And he started with a big drum fill and everybody was kind of following him. And he was also the only one in the band sitting down. And I thought it was cool. Clearly, he was special. Uh, everybody else had to stand up. Um, and it, it, it was just on my radar after that, after seeing that uh, TV performance. And then not long after that, maybe a week or two later, I went to some event uh, with my parents and there was a band playing and I was so fascinated with the band and music and drums and everything that I walked up onto the stage uh, while the band was playing and I walked straight to the drum set and held on to the kick drum from the front while the guy was playing and as, yeah, I think I was four years old wow. so it was a, just about the same height as the kick drum Mm -hmm. And I remember just holding this the the hoop of the kick drum from the front and feeling the thumping of the kick drum against my chest and the insane volume and just looking up at the guy playing and everything was moving and there was so much action and the foot was going here and the, the cymbal was, you know, 
moving over there and everything was you know there was just action all over the place and um and just feeling that low end thumping against my chest had a major impact on me and uh, i was fascinated and infected by the drum virus immediately and uh right after that i asked my mom if uh, if i could play the drums and not long after that you know and i started making drumsticks out of arrows from my you know bow and arrow and bang yeah. and started banging on things uh and playing along to kind of rock and roll tapes that my brother my older brother had and uh and my mother uh got me drum lessons and uh, i was lucky to have a really great teacher from the very beginning in that local town where i grew up and uh and stuck with him for several years and uh and you know he guided me along in the first few very important years of of my playing career and that was it you know i mm -hmm. i stuck with it and as soon as i figured out that this is actually a viable uh option as to choose as a profession i did you know when i was about 10 or, or 11 or something i realized well this is something you can do um as a as a profession too and uh, and i went for it wow that's so that's so great i i love the the thought of you holding on to that bass drum and feeling yeah. feeling it and i think we all have those moments where we were like affected physically oh, okay. right absolutely and i think that uh, to this day you know my style of playing is very much influenced by that like low you know kick drums kind mm -hmm. of foot operated drums a lot of uh, kind of bottom kit playing and yeah. um, and a lot of coordination and independence because that was my first sort of exposure and experience with it and mm -hmm. i think to this day uh, my style and and my ideas is very much influenced by that yeah, I mean, when I think of you, I think about your footwork, of course. Um, so that's just like that. It's pretty significant. It's like, yeah, that I can see how that had that yeah. impact on you. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, and when when you talk about listening to your brother's rock and roll tapes, what what were those? What were you listening to at the time? You no, know, those were actually uh, kind of fifties rock and roll tapes, like Wanda Jackson and Bill Haley, and and uh, those kind of real, real fifties rock and roll songs, mm -hmm. uh, Elvis and and stuff like that. And um, and then he had not, and uh, the drum sounds were great on those, and mm -hmm. it, was, it was simple enough for me to kind of understand and kind of tap along. And he then got some sort of 70s, uh, 60s, 70s uh, British rock and hard rock uh, tapes, you know, Deep Purple and, you know, stuff like that. And mm -hmm. I got into that, too. Uh, quite a lot more complex than the 50s style uh, right. songs I listened to very early. But that was definitely a... Um, sort of a, a major influence and kind of a, a, a taste maker for me you know in my yes. early playing days and to this day you know i love 60s and 70s rock yes and the drum sounds and songs from that era so yeah but i started with those kind of 50s rock and roll tapes I, it's funny that you mentioned elvis because i recently interviewed tim alexander um from primus and he yeah. he grew up listening to elvis that was one of his like biggest and that's oh, the first time i had heard that so i was like oh interesting yeah. um, i i was lucky to, to meet ron tut um yes. you know, years ago in in uh, memphis and um yeah and, and i love elvis i mean yes. you know, well so many great songs and uh, montana what's his name um the other drummer with him um forget his first name but um there was some great playing on all those songs and yeah. uh, you know it had really great energy and i still love elvis and that era and that kind of music to this day yes i i agree i think i think of the holidays when i think about elvis because i have the christmas album and that's been a tradition right. we're decorating we always listen to elvis christmas decorating yeah. for christmas. <laughs> and i think i mentioned before we started recording i have a uh rooster named elvis as well so oh that's right yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> well and johnny cash and johnny cash yes. <laughs> yes um but yeah that's that is that is really interesting and then as far as drummers go like when because i think of you as 
a, an ultimate drummer's drummer. You know, you are revered by other drummers as being a drummer's drummer, and, which is, you know, a big, big thing. We think of they're like ultimate drummer's drummers in the world where like so many drummers count you as an influence. And I'm just wondering about your experience growing up. Did you discover those like ultimate drummers, drummers growing up, or were you more into like drumming within the music? I was totally into drumming within the music and drumming in context uh, with music, of course. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't know how this drummers, drummer thing happened, to be honest. And, you know, still my main interest and ambition uh, is to play music. Um, yeah. I just some kind of ended up uh, in this spot. I don't know how to be honest, but I, I, I always appreciated real skill and great command and, and, you know, the ability to translate any creative IT idea onto the kit without technical limits. And yes, I always loved drummers who seemed very, very competent, you know, in mm -hmm. that area of expertise. So I was always a big fan of drummers who who just sort of, uh, you know, had confidence in their playing. You could tell that there's a lot more, you know, behind what they're actually playing. There's a lot more they could do. And and there were so many, you know, subtle things that that showed that there's a lot of competence and experience in their playing and technical skill. And uh, it seemed like they had no technical limitations to say anything they want to say on the drum set. And I always enjoyed listening to those drummers and also other musicians, you know, that goes for any instrument. I, I do appreciate uh, if when somebody has real control and command and uh, and total creative freedom on their instrument and early on you know i got into drummers like billy copham of course you know he was a huge influence influence for me mm -hmm. and um buddy rich huge inf influence and you know one of the most virtuoso kind of players ever and um and i just i wanted to be able to play anything that pops into my mind or anything that another musician would you know suggest to me or um you know anything that um that's possible or impossible on the instrument at the time i was just interested and 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 fascinated by the potential of playing and coming up with new things and new ideas and the drums is you know i think are a perfect instrument for that there you can tweak them to make them so uniquely individual and you you know simply by choosing an interesting setup or or different size drums and a weird configuration you can get super creative yeah and i really enjoyed that and 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 my, all my favorite dramas are very creative dramas that are kind of quirky and left field and different from the norm but also have great technical ability and a lot of really creative ideas and um and i just uh followed that you know and somehow ended up as a drummer's drummer mm -hmm. you no know, but i think it's simply because i i i like to try new things and explore sort of uncharted uncharted unchart territory and uh, and get creative behind mm -hmm. it Absolutely. And I think there are like infinite possibilities with the drums, you know, it, like you said, changing the configuration or adding sounds, um, exactly. any of that. I mean, have there has there ever been a time where you've changed your setup so much that you just had like an explosion of creativity from that? Absolutely. And I do it all the time. And it, it, mm -hmm. hence uh, the reason why I always have multiple sets set up. I, I like to sort of force myself to think outside of the box and not get too comfortable on one particular kit figure uh, configuration i i remember many times where i deliberately uh, and you know put myself into a situation where i had to completely rethink everything just playing left-handed kits for example for a while or um 
kind of forcing myself to play sort of upside down beats, play foot patterns with my hands and hand patterns with my feet, um, and uh, and experiment a lot with uh, independence and sort of applied independence in groove context, layers of rhythms and so on. So yes, I and I still force myself into these uncomfortable situations and and uh you know i i play completely new and different configurations all the time just to keep myself on the toes and 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 continue to be creative and force myself to be creative and and find creative solutions to technical problems sometimes you know yeah i like that a lot i i think i think that's that's great for people to hear because you know, I think a lot of people would think about you and your level of expertise on this instrument and think like, where do you go from there? What what do you learn? But what you're saying is there's always something to learn. And um, I always think about, you know, change and challenge promoting growth. You can't really grow without that, without Absolutely. that challenge. Right. So like that's that's some good advice for anyone who feels like they're kind of at a point in their journey they're playing journey where they're maybe a little bit um you know stagnant need to need to challenge themselves absolutely and i like to do that on a daily basis and you know as as you know in music there is no finish line you know there is no okay that's it i'm done it just doesn't exist you can always learn more you can always improve tweak and uh and become a better musician all over um and on the drums especially it's infinite you know the possibilities are are completely endless mm -hmm. and it all just depends on your creativity and whether you're willing to continue to learn no matter how good you are or not mm -hmm. there is no point where you can say that's it i've achieved everything i can play all these things right Done. you know it that doesn't exist and if you're that you know complacent and and sort of content with your ability at any stage you know then uh, i think you're you're not sort of gonna reach your full potential right and, right uh, I, I think uh, you're kind of imposing creative limits on yourself by not continuing to learn and experiment and uh, improve on a daily basis and part of that for me is to change my setups all the time to play a lot of different styles of music and um, i have a very eclectic taste in music and i try to take influences from all kind of genres and styles and all kinds of world music um and um and mix that with sort of the the standard the uh, rock and roll you know styles that we all know and and bring in some jazz and some world music and try to merge that all into you know my style of playing and yeah. constantly work on it and constantly think of new ways and ideas and tweak and uh, improve as much as I can. Uh, you know, my time is very limited right now to just sit down and practice and experiment, but I still try, you know, and even if it's just in my head, uh, even if I right. can't spend the time behind the drums, but I like to come up with new ideas and, and slightly new approaches and always develop something you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i think like i think of so many drummers who just drum until they're like 90 something years old like we we you and i have so many friends who are still playing they're they're you know in their 80s late 80s 90s still playing Absolutely. drums because like there's no end to the possibilities and to the growth exactly. and i love that so much absolutely it play um, forever and it keeps you young right <laughs> I, I couldn't agree more uh, yeah we have so many friends who are literally in their 80s and and still going strong and i think music especially drumming because also very physical uh, mm -hmm. it does keep you young and if you're doing something that you enjoy uh i think um you know it it uh it makes you happy and, it, yes. and that's a big uh, aspect of of healthy living and uh and staying young both mentally and physically yeah yeah and if you see a group of drummers like you know that that are hanging out at your place too it there's no happier group of people like just 
the the smiles, the laughter, the stories totally. um, go on forever. But but I agree, it it keeps you happy. Um, yeah. And I want to talk to you mentioned about appreciating people who have freedom on their instrument, whatever instrument it is. And you also play guitar, bass, keys, right? Um, and who are the who are the influences that you have in that aspect who you feel are really free on their instrument as far as other instruments go? You know, I, I, I grew up playing piano for many years. You know, my mother wanted me to learn a real instrument also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At the same time I started playing drums, um, I started taking, you know, piano lessons. And um, the, for me, the drums were always the priority. And I did, over the years, learn other instruments. And I'm by no means like a great guitar player or anything. I play bass guitar. I play bass. And I also play bass live. And I've toured playing bass and stuff. And, and of course, keyboards. But for me, playing other instruments was always about writing and not you know, being able to perform great necessarily on other instruments. It, they were writing tools for me. I wanted to create my own music always. So I didn't have, and I still to this day don't, I mean, there's of course guitar players that I uh, admire and I think they're absolutely incredible, but I never tried to kind of emulate what they were doing necessarily on a guitar or on a bass or whatever. I just wanted to learn melodic instruments so I could write and produce music. Um, for myself and and for other people and be part of the writing and production process because i love music in general you know mm -hmm. um in regards to performing i always have the most fun playing the drums on stage and yes bass i enjoy too um but i wouldn't want to necessarily perform playing keyboards or something it's just not that attractive to me you know i have mm -hmm. a lot more fun uh, playing drums so <clears throat> playing other main instruments was about understanding music in general a little better. And it was about writing songs with other people and, and being able to create sort of a musical context for what I wanted to do on the drums. That mm -hmm. was always my goal and still is. And honestly, I haven't practiced, you know, anything uh, on keys or keyboard or piano or bass or in forever. I just, use these instruments as tools and when i record bass in the studio on something then i have to like sit down and practice the parts and come up with something and uh it'll take me a while mm -hmm. um to to you know play it as well as i want it or need it um and um and then it's done you know it's not like i have the ambition to really nail that part you know i'll punch in and 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 uh do whatever it takes um, to make it work, mm -hmm. but my ambition to be like a great bass player or, or guitar player is, is pretty much zero. And yeah. uh, it's all about being able to create sort of uh, music, you know, mm -hmm. in general. And I like to be part of the conversations when you're writing with other people in a room or you're working on records. I, I just want to be involved. And that was really the reason why I continued to dabble with other instruments you know sure yeah well it gives you more of a a way to communicate with the other musicians and a better understanding of what they are doing right and okay. um and what they want from you too like as another musician what they would want from the drums so. yes, but it yes. all stems back to the drums of course <laughs> yes in the end it's i just wanted to know and understand uh what everybody else is doing and i wish that a lot of other musicians would do the same you know mm -hmm. uh, because um i think it just helps everybody in the band if everybody has you know a decent amount of knowledge and awareness of what the other guys are doing Absolutely. and uh, it's also just nice to be part of of the compositional process and production process and in order to do that competently you need to be able to understand all instruments and play mm -hmm. a little bit if possible yeah yeah, that's that's so true. And yeah. you know, when I think about um when I think about the times that I've seen you play and the clinics that you've delivered because you're known for your clinics and master classes too. That's, you know, such a such a big thing. Um always so different one to the next. I mean, you demonstrate techniques, you know, that are that are familiar themes, but 
but the clinics that I've seen you give are have been vastly different from each other, which I think is is incredibly um, talented on your part because you've done so many of these. And I remember, um, I remember you doing a whole bunch, a string of clinics, actually. Maybe when I close to when I first got into this industry, um, maybe like the early two thousands or so, where you were. It was like so big. I just remember hearing about all the countries that you were going to. Right. Um, yes, uh, I remember in like early 2000s, maybe 2003 or so, or uh, two, three. I did a bunch. I mean, I did a really massive clinic tour all over the world. I think I did, I want to say like 200 something. Yes. yes, yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. One year, and it was... Um, I was recording, or I had recorded instructional DVDs at the time with Hudson Music, and we, and at the same time, I uh, uh, designed some signature products, and uh, and all these different elements and manufacturers uh, came together to organize this massive clinic tour to promote mm -hmm. all these products and the DVDs and what have you, and. Uh, yeah, it was a really interesting experience, and I did a ton uh, of clinics and masterclasses all over the world, like a massive world tour, basically. And also played a ton of concerts that year, too. So it was it was really intense, but a very interesting experience because every time you teach somebody something about, you know, your instrument, you learn a little more about yourself, about your own approach, about your sort of habits and um, by explaining to somebody what you're doing, you just uh, learn more about yourself and about your own weaknesses and strengths, etc. So it was very helpful in sort of tweaking and refining my playing and uh, thinking about my own sort of, you know, applications of techniques and uh, sort of the methods that I came up with that worked for me when I was uh, practicing. And uh, I think the more you know about your own habits, your own sort of instincts, approaches, and uh, the more you talk about what you do to other people, the more profound your sort of your knowledge becomes you know and your own mm -hmm. sort of uh command becomes and your your own skill level becomes you know so it was very helpful and uh and also it was inspiring for the people that i uh you know played for and and taught at the time and there's a lot of great energy coming back so it was a very rewarding experience i i bet i bet it was and i think like thinking about that, all of the countries that you visited, um, music, of course, is kind of like this universal language that we all talk about. But drumming in particular, I feel like translates to every, everyone, right? Every, everyone, Absolutely. everyone can pick up sticks and hit something or, you know, hit drums with their hands and make sound and be part of it. And so I just can imagine that that must have been really, um, you know, eye opening for you too to go to all these places and see how you were connecting with all of these different people in all of these different countries who absolutely even speak the it's, same language. You know, music is the universal language, and specifically drumming, it's such a primal thing. Everybody can identify with grabbing a stick and banging on something, you know, mm -hmm. like Vic Firth, uh, Vic, you know, actually told me that if you put a clarinet in a corner at a party, right, and it's a little tipsy, nobody's going to touch that clarinet. But if there's a drum set in the corner, everybody's going to want to sit, sit down and bash around a little, yes. you know, and it's true. It's such a fun instrument. You know, it's such a primal thing for us humans to do. Uh, rhythm is something that everybody understands and uh, everybody can feel and it's so closely connected with with rituals you know with traditions with culture 
uh, drums and rhythm is in every country in every world you know has has um, a love and passion for rhythm mm -hmm. and, and and drums being the oldest instrument on the planet you know the human voice isn't an instrument it's not external to the human body you know mm -hmm. but the actual the first instrument that we use and and created was uh, some kind of percussion instrument you know just banging on nice. stuff finding out oh that sounds good mm -hmm. you know and it's so loud the guy over there can hear it you know <laughs> so um i can tell him hey we're having a party in our <laughs> come over and uh, so yeah it's something everybody can identify with and i was really uh pleasantly surprised and super inspired by the fact that wherever you go on the planet drum, music and drumming will help you connect with people and mm -hmm. will will sort of help you establish a uh, a platform for conversations and exchanges and no matter how different you are in your philosophy and ideologies and mentalities whatever that is always a common ground and it's uh, it's a beautiful thing and it's, amazing. Whatever, it's you know asia you know africa south america europe anywhere everybody gets that you know yeah. everybody is able to connect with drums rhythm the instrument even you know even whether the drummers or not doesn't matter at all so mm -hmm. it's a beautiful thing i agree and i i just it just sparked a, a thought um where you know, everywhere you go, and I'm sure you have this this same experience, but people love drums so much. They either wanted to be a drummer and never tried, or they were back in high school, or their brother was, or their sister was, or whatever. There's always a story there. And I joke because Uber, I'm, I'm, I take a lot of Uber rides on my travels it, or in my travels. And um, there's always, a, the Uber driver is either a drummer or new, you know, <laughs> knows a drummer it's or their crazy, kids a drummer. It? it's absolutely. just conversation starter always right absolutely absolutely it happens to me all the time too yeah. and uh, and it just shows that you know drums are just fun everybody wants to play drums you know uh, mm -hmm. and or at least try you know they yeah. you know even if they don't have any professional ambitions but it's one of those fun things to do you know it's physical it's uh, it can be you know very intellectual if you want it to be yes um, but it's such an immediate satisfaction when you take a drum stick and you bang on a drum boom there it is it's just fun you know and um, and I think you get a lot back from the instrument more than from other instruments and it's also an instrument that you can in the beginning you can learn it very quickly mm -hmm. and, and 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 make something sound good and feel great. And uh, of course, it takes very long to master it. But if you compare, like, you know, drums to a violin, it'll take you forever to just be able to play, you know, uh, you know, in in tune on a violin. Sure. You know, yeah. The drums can bash it out and play a beat in no time at all. So right. it's 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 a very quick entry into that world. And I think that's what a lot of people can identify with and and experience when they dabble with drums and. And it's it's just so much fun, no matter how old you are. And it happens to me all the time, whether it's cab drivers or yes. uh, whoever I meet anywhere in the world. There's so many people who have either played the drums or used to play the drums or want to play the drums or yes. just play the drums. You know, it's it's yeah, it's, and it's never it's, too late, right? It's never like just pick up the sticks and play. And exactly. I always say that just start. I meet a lot of people, especially like older women who are like, you know, I always wanted to play, but I would never got the chance or it wasn't something that girls did back then. And I'm just, I'm always like, pick up sticks and play. It's so much exactly. fun. Exactly. And, you know, yeah. there's always a band out there looking for a drummer. So right. Do it. Um, exactly, so speaking yeah. of which, if someone wants to get into drumming or someone is into drumming at, at any level, um, how do they find you as far as the lessons go and all of that? Well, you can go to westlakedrumsetter.com and um, and contact me with a, via the website and um, also through my website, thomaslangdrummer.com um, or in, you know through social media, Instagram, Thomas Lang Drums. Follow me there, send me a message. Um, and uh, yeah, you can uh, either take remote lessons with me wherever you are in the world or come here to the Westlake Drum Center for physical lessons. 
And uh, yeah, if if my time allows, I'm always happy to teach. That's so great. That's yeah. so, so great. And I'll put all the links too in the description and in the oh, podcast show notes. So anyone can click on there and find you and follow you and all of that. And definitely get down to the drum center because how how much fun is that? Sounds it sounds like a blast, and I have to I have to get there um, yes. sooner than later. But tell me also, or let us know, what do you have coming up? What is what is happening for you? Well, at the moment, I'm deep into session work here, session work, teaching, and producing for Drum Channel. Um, okay. I did a lot of you know playing live, touring. Um, uh, this summer in Europe, I was on a tour and. I'm doing local gigs. I've got some gigs coming up with Rafael Moreira, you know, a great guitar player here in LA. We play some local shows and with Dragon Choir and Mark Bonilla. We just played the uh, Synthplex uh, Keith Emerson tribute about a week ago, two weeks ago with Jordan Rudis and a uh, great wow. other bunch of amazing keyboard players. Um, we have some more shows coming up and um, and I'm doing a lot of session work. So just working for clients from all over the world who sent me tracks. And, um, you know, I am, that's really sort of at the moment for the next, uh, until early next year, that's the bulk of what I do. Um, and I work on, you know, maybe somewhere between five to 10 albums a month usually. Wow. And then do a lot of uh, teaching streams, you know, a lot of, producing for drum channel here writing also i write for for television and uh commercials and stuff so that's also a big part of what i do um and i'm trying to work wow. on new music for myself you know i yeah. i try to carve out some time to practice and come up with some new ideas and record some new music i've got some you know drum festivals coming up and um i think where did we see each other was it uh uh, Quebec or no? I saw. Where did I see you last? I can't I remember. I saw. I saw you oh, at Groovex. Groovex Groove exactly, at his yeah. Yes, that's where we saw each other. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, but you know, there's there's always something. It's 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 very. Uh, it is so many different things happening always, which I enjoy. You know, there's yeah. a lot of there's playing live shows for me. You know, local live shows, and then there's you know touring for me nothing it's in the next month or so nothing mm -hmm. major international but next year again but then there's also a lot of session work and there's the whole educational uh aspect to it so i wear many hats and i like to um to have these different avenues and experiences you know for me again it's about the creativity and and the uh change of pace mm -hmm. you know? really enjoy that i like just learning new material for a record and recording it well and i like uh you know performing live so i like that balance absolutely and i always i mean I, and i love following you on instagram too so anyone out there who does not follow thomas follow him because you your posts are are so great and your show you show the drumming community um like it is you know this this big group of musicians who just love each other so much and absolutely um, it's, uh, yeah, the drumming community is a very special one compared to all the the other uh, communities which uh, i don't even think many other communities exist i don't think there's a bass player community or is there yeah uh, i don't know <laughs> or clarinet clarinet player community yeah exactly I don't know. <laughs> community um no there is i'm sure there's a bass player community but um you know it's um it's not like the drumming community I think that in in our instrument requires so much dedication and so much hard work. You know, all instruments do to a certain degree, but I think personally, and because I know other instruments and can play other instruments, I know the differences. You know, in in approach to practicing and and what it takes, and I think it's so. Um, you can show anybody anything. But mm -hmm. they still have to put in the work. Whereas with other main instruments, you, there's a lot of things you can show people that are little shortcuts, and uh, and you can do a lot of stuff with sounds and, and and tweaking things and with distortion and delays and what have you to make things sound amazing very easily and quickly. 
-hmm. On the drums, it's you know, it's bare bones. It's yeah. it's just your hands and the sticks and your feet. And it's all about that physical control, and it takes a long time to master mm -hmm. and many, many hours of dedicated practice to make things sound good. And I think this is something that all the drummers have in common, you know, simply the knowledge that yeah, you can show anybody anything, and people in the drumming community share anything comp openly, more openly than in other communities, because everybody knows, well, here it is, take it, you know. Yes. But you still have to put in the work and see you in seven years, you know. <laughs> you really want to do this. Good luck, you know. You'll be on the way. Yeah. Kind of no secrets and no um, kind of uh, ego in our community because of that, you know, I think. I so. Agree. It's a really wonderful thing. Yeah, I agree. It is. It is a wonderful thing. Yeah. Um, well, everyone listening should definitely go and check out Westlake Drum Center and also follow you on Instagram. Yes. Um, and, you know, they can keep up to date on what you have going on and where they can see you play live. Um, yes. You have yes. some live dates and all of that stuff. So and, uh, also check out Thomas Lang's Drum Universe on Drum Channel, my online school. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Check that out. And you do, did you say weekly live streams? Yes. Weekly live streams every day, every Saturday morning uh, at 9 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, we're streaming and uh, on Wednesday nights at 6 p.m. Perfect. Yeah. All right. So definitely everyone listening, check that out for sure. And thank you so much, Thomas. I really appreciate your time today and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks for having me. And uh, until next time, somewhere at a drum festival, probably. <laughs> Absolutely. That's probably where it will be. <laughs> I'll see you at Drumio. I think I'll be there again next year. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Yes, Drumio. Absolutely. Thank you, Thomas. Right. We'll talk Thank to you, you soon. Sarah. Thanks for having Bye. me. Stay warm over there on the East Coast. Thank you. I will try. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Thank you for tuning in today. Join us each Tuesday for new episodes of Sarah Hagen Backstage.